Hey, hey, Clay, wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and I don't know if you saw in the chat line, you probably haven't yet, but uh, uh, Cecil Carter put in a, a great uh, theologian, Lionel Richie, said these words, when your past calls, don't answer. It has nothing new to say. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's that'll, that'll preach right there. So thank you for uh, the good, good news, uh, the good word. And, 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 and there's so many things uh, that uh, I know several of you have uh, talked to me that have um, some insights into this disappointment thing. But before we go there, any reaction uh, from the from the crowd on what Clay shared? And as I mentioned in my prelude, uh, introducing Clay, Clay, you speak from experience. There have been some things in your life, um, especially thinking about you know your mom's situation with Robert Courtney, where the disappointment and the everything could have just overwhelmed you. But uh, through the grace of God, you you um, process that you. Did exactly. You let it go. You looked up. You looked ahead, and you got to work. And I love, I love that that you're not just, hey, this is a great idea. You guys, good luck in doing it. But you've actually experienced it firsthand. You know, one thing I discovered, Rod, is when, and I, I think I even mentioned it this way when we talked about forgiveness. If if you will start with the very biggest, worst, heaviest disappointment in your life, if you start there and deal with it, all the other ones get a lot quicker. Mm. We gain traction really quick when we start with the most difficult one. Yeah. And I can't imagine what that one, the heaviness of that one, that could have just left you paralyzed for a long, long, long time. And then the little ones could have equally paralyzed you, but you dealt with the big one right out of the gate. So beautiful. Guys, any reaction uh, to what uh, Clay shared? Yeah, Clay, uh, thank you, brother, as you always do, bringing the word. I, I tell you, yesterday was a day full of disappointments. <laughs> so as you're talking about this, um, I hadn't had a day like that in a long time. It was a combination, mainly at work. Things just, nothing was seemed to be going right. Um, you know, I'm in the health field, and I'm seeing um, insurance change as far as what they cover. And so I'm seeing patients that, having a hard time being covered by things that they need. And so I'm getting, I was very disappointed about that. I'm disappointed with, uh, I'm starting a new therapist, but she can't get her license for two more weeks. So I had planned for her to start next week. So all these things were, were starting to bottle up and I, I did not handle that very well at all. But what I'm discovering is, is praise God. He's convicted me quicker to come back to him. And so um, my wife works with me three days a week. She happened to be there and she came into the office and we just prayed together. We just said, okay, God, you know, you've got this, um, trusting you for, um, the things that were, that, that I'm dealing with today. Um, and so for me, it's going, it's, it's, it's learning to be, um, uh, sensitive to the Holy Spirit's conviction to, um, uh, get her, come back to him and right back to the source of, of truth. And, um, like you said, going back to the promises, the things that he's done in the past. So anyway, yeah, it was yesterday was a day of full of disappointments like I'd never had. But um, as the day went on, I really got reminded me of his faithfulness, um, his truths, going back to the, the, the verses that I've memorized over the years. Um, and so it ended up being uh, at, at, at the end of the day, um, uh, it's, it's just remembering his, his goodness. And so um, it's a, for me, anyway, it's it a timely message because I mean, it was a day full of disappointments yesterday and I hadn't I hadn't reacted like that. It was totally flesh coming out yesterday. Um, and so being convicted to go back and say, OK, um, my, I, I, it's the fruit of the spirit that I want to be you know, coming out. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, all of that. And um, so anyway, to have, you know, uh, just just going back to and understanding his promises. And, um, you know, desiring to have that, uh, my response to be different in the future. And so, um, and I've, you know, gone through some disappointments in my life, but God has been faithful. And it's during those times that our faith, my faith has been strengthened. The, the, the character has been developed. And um, I know it's just an ongoing process until my last mm. breath or he comes back. So thanks for your message. Mm. You're so welcome. <clears throat>
So yesterday uh, I was scheduled to play in a, in a Young Life golf tournament up in Platte County and uh, Joe Calhoun invited me to be part of his group and Joe unfortunately wasn't able to join the group because he sprained his ankle a week ago I mean badly and was not able to walk and so he gave up his spot to another guy um, who ended up not showing up so just three of us were in this foursome and it was disappointing because I couldn't play with Joe and be quite honest, I played terrible, you know, disappointed myself. And after the round, I called Joe on the phone and, and, and here's the neat part play. Joe had no idea what you're talking about today, but he began to talk about disappointments and a new insight that he just had to disappointments. Joe, would you mind just telling these guys what you shared with me yesterday? Cause it ministered to me on, on the back end of a day that, uh, mm -hmm. You know, I didn't get to see you. I played terrible golf. And yet you had a you had a good word right from the book of James that ties beautifully with this. So, Joe, thank you for what you're going to share right now. You got to you got to get the mute off. You got to unmute yourself. Rod, be sure, to, be sure to put this in perspective. You did make a 40 foot putt. And I, and I won this shirt for making that 40 foot putt. There you go. I had one good shot, guys. One contribution. <laughs> and he's wearing it like a badge of honor. Uh, well, thanks. Thanks, Clay. Your love of the Lord and dependence on the Lord is inspiring and evident. Um, thanks, Scott, for your humility and just sharing what we all go through. We all go through these disappointments. And, you know, we're all trying to figure out how to handle them. And I appreciate both your words. This uh, teaching I told Rod was from a 10-part um, series called Dream to Destiny, Dream mm -hmm. to Destiny by Robert Morris, and it was called Passing the Prison Test. Mm -hmm. So Passing the Prison Test is obviously talking about Joseph, who gets thrown in prison. He's, he's wrongly accused. There's no reason he should be in prison. But instead of running around like most people would do and say, I didn't really do it. I don't belong <laughs> in prison. It's not my fault. And instead of making excuses and complaining, he just went in. Instead of making it about me, 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 he made it about serve, serve, serve. And it says that the head of the prison didn't have to worry about a single thing. Joseph, that God was with him. and he was with him because of, I think, what Clay is talking about here, that Joseph, he gloried in tribulation, yeah. knowing that that tribulation was producing perseverance. Mm. Now, the speaker on this was saying that, hey, a trial, you know, that's just patience. Trials don't last long. You just need a little patience for a trial. But a Tribulation is very long, mm -hmm. and that requires and develops perseverance. So mm -hmm. the, the example I think of is my son who accepted the Lord when he was six, walked away from the Lord when he was 13, and 25 years later, he finally is coming back to the Lord. 25 years. And the author talked about how these are Joseph and David, 13 years, Abraham, 25 years, Moses, 40 years. This is what we mean by the tribulation that produces perseverance. Long, long, long tribulation. And uh, that develops character. And that develops hope. And then Clay touched on this. And, and Robert dug into this just a little deeper. And he's Robert's so good with the English language and the Greek translations. So just to put it all in perspective, he says, tribulation, long suffering, you know, produces this perseverance, perseverance produces character, and, and character produces hope. And then he says, hope does not disappoint. Hope does not disappoint. So hope does not negative, dis negative, that's a double negative. So if hope does not disappoint, hope appoints. Well, what does hope appoint? Disappoint means 
um, Scott had all these appointments in his mind. Clay has these appointments. I have these appointments. We have all these circumstances that we're seeing how we'd like them to go. We have all these appointments in our mind. But there's a different type of appointment. So let me just circle back to the what really broke me, and then I'll make this point. What really broke me was a old verse that I quoted so many times in Proverbs 13, 12. And it says that hope makes hope deferred makes the heart sick. And I use that for anybody that had hope for anything. And I would just say, you know, hope deferred makes your heart sick. Well, it's true. But he said, it really isn't talking about um, your hope. It's really talking about misplaced hope. Mm -hmm. If we place our hope like Joseph could have done in his circumstances instead of in God, that's misplaced hope. So every time that we're placing our hope in our circumstances, yesterday, like you, Scott, I had a really, really tough morning. It was disaster. Thank God I pressed into him, and it ended up being a great day with lots of peace, lots of joy. But if I'm looking at my circumstances, that's me, me, me. And when I don't look at my circumstances, when I look to God, that's serve, serve, serve. And the difference in those two is mind-boggling. Mm -hmm. And so he basically says, that uh, perseverance is doing the right thing, even when your circumstances have changed. It's pretty mm. profound. Perseverance is doing the right thing, even when your circumstances have not changed. Uh, you know, for 25 years, my circumstance didn't change. Joseph had walked away from the Lord and was rejecting the Lord of his youth. And it was hard. It was difficult. It was a tribulation. And am I going to focus on that circumstance or am I going to focus on God? That's what he says is the fundamental question. And here's the payoff. Hope, hope does not disappoint. The Bible is very clear. The Bible in Romans 5 says hope does not disappoint. And so, so what does it mean? The double negative does not disappoint. It means hope appoints divine appointments. Hope leads to divine appointments. When we trust in him, he opens up doors and does, does things that are miraculous for us. Yeah. He gives us divine appointments. Divine appointment, I'll go back to Clay. We drove out to Colorado a couple of years ago. We were with Joseph. He God allowed us to uncover all kinds of hurts and heartaches and pains and we had crying and we had forgiveness and we had just Diane, my wife and Joseph, my son and I, and God has given us a divine appointment to be in Colorado, looking at those beautiful mountains, enjoying that, everything you talked about, although you do a better job of enjoying it than we do. <laughs> but it was just, um, it was miraculous. God gave us a divine appointment. Then he came back, he gave us another divine appointment and God started ordering our steps and we started seeing that God was giving us his divine appointments. I'll finish with this. Uh, when Rod and I first met, I was driving down the road one day. And God gave me a spark. Call Rod. Call Rod. Rod needs encouragement right now. Call and encourage him. And many of you have heard the story. That was a divine appointment. My life was changed because of coming into Rod's life, me serving him, him serving me, us developing this godly relationship that literally changed my life. So bottom line is, hey, uh, we should glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character. Boy, we didn't even dig into that. <laughs> character, hope. Now, hope does not disappoint. Hope gives us divine appointments. Wait for them. Look for them. God wants to use us to serve, 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 not sit around going, why me, me, me. Hope that yeah. helps. Well. Um, again, I love God's timing because um, the very, and, and again, Joe had no idea Clay was talking about this today. And this was the exact conversation we had yesterday. And you, Joe, you said something else that I thought was interesting. You didn't add today. Give the Joseph piece on why you think he had two extra years in prison. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that's very interesting. So, so Robert says, when, 
when he, when Joseph was just putting up with all the circumstances, not complaining and not trying to make his own way out, but trusting God was his way out. Everything went great. Everything was going fine. But he kind of got impatient near the end of his prison time. And he says to the, who was it? The, uh, not the baker. It was the, uh, was it the, he says to the guy that didn't get his head cut off, right? When he interpreted his dream. <laughs> He says to the guy that he interpreted the dream, he says, by the way, when you get with Pharaoh, tell him what I've done. And um, Robert said that was him trying to make a way, thinking that God couldn't make a way. And as soon as he did that, he was saying, I'm putting my trust in circumstances, not in God. Mm -hmm. And if it was the circumstance, if he looked to the circumstance and said, because I said that and manipulated this guy to go talk to Pharaoh, that's how I got out of this thing. Then he's going to live his whole life thinking, all I got to do is manipulate this person and step in and do God's part instead of letting God do his part. And then I'm going to see my way clear of this. And he's basically saying, I think you got two more years because he said that instead of resting in the Lord. God could have given Pharaoh that dream anytime he wanted. And he's saying, I think he waited two more years to give it to him because the character had not been developed yet fully in Joseph. Mm -hmm. And so, gosh, how many times have I tried to manipulate something by telling somebody, hey, could you put a good word in for me over here? And this, would you do this for me? And then I start thinking it's all that talk that I do that is my God. That's mm -hmm. what's going to save me. No, it's not. It's going to make it worse. Because God is my only God. Hey, this lesson is so big and so hard to grasp. But hopefully we all get a glimpse into that God, as you guys have both said, Clay and Scott, he is faithful. Amen. 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 Great word, guys. Hey, comments, uh, reaction to Clay's message and this message on disappointment today. Good morning. Thank you, Clay. As always, in, in all of these Zoom TGIW sessions, they're all different. They all touch on a particularly important <clears throat> part. I've tried to leave disappointments behind. Took a long, long time. I'm only a month away from 80. And it's so negative. I always like to, I wake up in the morning, I might ache or whatever, but I try and get to that joy point as soon as possible. One thing that you said, Clay, was that we forget things. Mm -hmm. It's all there. The problem is we don't know how to retrieve it. Mm -hmm. And the input and the output to the brain are two totally different mechanisms. Mm -hmm. With the input, we need structure. And, and all these talks that we get here, they are all well structured. They take us through the process from the start of what we're talking about through to the end or mm. the next stage. Mm. But when we are trying to remember something, we need what's called a trigger. It, it's like it's like hearing two or three notes of a, of a song or a piece of music or whatever, and suddenly you remember exactly where you were, what was happening, who you were with, all those little details, even what you were eating if you were mm. in a restaurant. And it's that trigger. And when you understand how to, re how to use triggers to get that information, it's all there. Mm. Good mm. stuff, Mike. Thank you, buddy. Can't wait to see you tomorrow, too. Indeed. We're looking forward to it. Yes. Any other thoughts on uh, disappointment this morning, guys? Rod, I would just say thank you guys so much. You, I mean, you're, I don't know that any of you necessarily fell asleep. That was, uh, that was great. Mm -hmm. But that as you continue to chew on what God may be saying to you, it may mm -hmm. be completely unrelated to anything that I shared. He has a great way of doing that. But right. that question number two is something that needs to, we need to chew on that. What is the residual of the way we process our disappointment? What is that residual in the lives of people that we love, people that are closest to us? 
that may reveal something different about the way we process our disappointment than mm. we were aware of. Mm. Might want to ask them because I think they'll tell you. Yeah, that's a, that's a super convicting question. I'm so glad you brought it up, Clay, because how we deal with is one thing, but the residual is maybe bigger than how we're even processing it, you know, and how it's affecting everybody else in our sphere. And it's really hard to serve. It's really hard to love. It's really hard to forgive. If, uh, if, if, if what they're, you know, and we may have thought, well, well, I moved on, but we've left a trail, a trail of bodies. Mm. <laughs> yep. That, that's, that's, and so, and so what you're inviting us to do, Clay, is ask them, right? Absolutely. Ask them. Because you you may well it's not that big of a deal. No, no, they may be they may be paralyzed now because of what you've done. Exactly how you've handled it. So exactly that's a hard one. It's, mm-hmm. it's really good. Any other reaction, guys, today? Just a big thank you to you, Clay, and your um, great example of how to enjoy the mountains of his glory and his grace and how to enjoy, not enjoy, let's say make the most of uh, these uh, tribulations and trials that come our way. And um, of course ties right to Rod's character that counts and develops character, amen. Right. Blake, a quick question for you. I mean, and those trials and those tribulations are the valleys, you know? And I know you're a mountain guy, but do you grow more in the mountains or grow more in the valleys? <laughs> I pursue the mountains. <laughs> I try to stay away from the valleys, but they always find me. Yeah. And the truth is we do grow. We just hate it. We do grow more in the valleys because our either either we will or we won't. Because in the valley, we are confronted with all kinds of obstacles. Some are created by ourselves, yeah. but we're, we're faced with all kinds of obstacles. In those moments, we will only grow toward Jesus if we look at him and trust him in the midst of it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I'm so glad Joe brought up the, the Joseph example, because in that valley he was in, he tried to manipulate. He tried to you know, and God's like, nah, it's not going to work. You know, I want your eyes on me. I can provide. And Joe, you're right. He could have given Pharaoh that dream two years earlier. Yeah. But he he thought, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work this situation over. That was a great insight. And so, what are we doing in the valley? Are we gonna, are we gonna, are we gonna let it build our character? Are we gonna trust God, keep our eyes on the on the Lord? Or are we gonna, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna scheme now. I'm gonna work this. I'm gonna do my deal. We call that networking. <laughs> uh, that's, that's our impatience. That's yeah. our impatience with God. Yeah. Yeah. So it's so good. That's great teaching stuff. Great teaching. Let it go. Look up. Look ahead. And then get to work, guys. Get to work. I, Clay, I wrote down your quote. If you're not dead, you're not done. <laughs> I wish I could claim that one. My, actually, my friend... Uh, gave that one and I I don't know where he got it but it is good yeah so one of the guys I played golf with yesterday one of the guys uh, Joe you know who I'm talking about he 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 when he plays golf he looks like he's uh, he's about dead I mean he just is very immobile I mean he just barely can get to the ball you're thinking man is this guy gonna is is this gonna be just embarrassing and I tell you what once he once he gets in his stance and he gets all settled in, the guy rips, grips it and rips it, man. And uh, I asked him, I said, he goes, I just got to keep moving. You know, I may be old, but I got to keep moving. And that's what he's, he's not dead and he's still doing really good. In fact, he just had back surgery, but the last round he played before his back surgery, he shot a 75. Since the surgery, he said he hasn't broken, broken in the seventies. He's in the low eighties, but still. The guy's got serious game, but he is not dead. He is not done. Right, Joe? Hey, we're not dead. We live forever. 
It's true. Love it. All right. Anything else, gentlemen, before we land the plane here? I'd just like to quickly say something about uh, today's. Am I, am I on? Yeah. Today's D Day. And uh, think of my, my parents' generation, many, some of you, your grandparents, maybe, but um, my dad, <clears throat> excuse me, my dad was drafted just a few months before I was born. And uh, in, in 1944, and those those young men who answered the call, um, I'm sure they all they undoubtedly all had lives planned and careers planned and families planned, and um, so many of them were killed on D-Day. And I mean, I don't, I don't know the number, but it's in the probably tens of thousands of men lost their lives on that day. And those families suffered extreme disappointment. Mm. And I, but I just think of the sacrifice that those guys made. They didn't, they didn't run to Canada to avoid being drafted and they didn't, they just went and they did their, did their duty for, for us, for our country and for pros, for posterity. Mm. And when, when I was, um, I was a little older than a lot of some of the draft. Any, anyway, I was was in 1966. I was hot on the on the draft list, and they were the army. They were drafting 50,000 people a month, and my dad was was terrified. He 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 was really scared that I was going to be sent to Vietnam and go sloshing through a rice paddy and be killed and. Uh, as it turned out, I did not. But uh, <clears throat> it's just that's kind of related to the fatherhood thing too. That mm. um, he he might he didn't he he didn't he wasn't in, involved in D Day, but um, he he was in Patton's Third Army, and he joked he was a clerk. He, he joked about carrying his typewriter over the bridge at Remagen. <laughs> but but anyway, I. Just, I'll, I'll stop rambling, but I just wanted to mm. help us remember that the sacrifices that those men made on D-Day. Hey, Larry, and what a great way to end today. I, I totally slipped my mind that this was D-Day, June 6th. Uh, so thank you for reminding us that it's a great way of uh, kind of landing things today with that perspective um, and the hope that those, those uh, valiant warriors gave that day. Uh, on our behalf. That's, I love that. Love that you shared that. Okay, gentlemen, with that being said, Larry had the last word. That was a good way to end. Thank you, gentlemen. 